seem to be the main feature here is to manufacture these giant spheres out of wedge-shaped sections. And then they put the sections together with low thermal epoxy. These are about 60 feet in diameter. Well, it turns out that was the main aspect of that place. They were manufacturing. He missed in the low thermal epoxy. It was actually a new form of low temperature welding. But he went on and he gave all, all kinds of data about the site. Again, problems always arise. <laughs> when they took the data to one group of analysts to, to, to analyze it, they said, we're scientific. This is nonsense. We're not going to look at it. They took it to another group who happened to be fundamentalists. They said, this may all be true, but this is of the devil, and we're not going to look at it. <laughs> they took it to a third group. Third group, fortunately, analyzed it and thought it was pretty good. But they wanted to get an outside opinion, so they sent it out to Los Alamos for review. The people at Los Alamos were sure that this site was a particle beam weapons facility. And they said, well, you know, the crane is pretty impressive, but he says this is for some space project, and we know it's not for that, so you can't really trust this data. When the Cold War was over, we got to go over there. It turned out it was for a space project. Well, this is all fine, but remember, they did not like us getting this kind of data. All of our reports had things like advanced threat technique assessment. So they were finally beginning to realize, you know, maybe there really is a problem because they just keep getting this data. Well, this is all fine for them, but what about us as scientists? We wanted to learn something about this. We didn't want to just turn into an operational branch of the government. So we got permission, we, and we, we talked them into the fact that, well, you know, we, there's a new Soviet hypothesis that uh, this is brainwave kind of stuff. So we should do some experiments to see if brainwaves could be involved. Well, if it's electromagnetism associated with the brain, there are a number of features that we can check. I mean, it should fall off with distance. So we decided to do a bunch of long-distance experiments around the country, out of the country, and so on. I could show you hundreds of those, and you can't believe how many of these we did. But I only want to show you two to make a particular point. The usual skeptical position is, well, they're going to say the grass is green, the sky is blue, and it's going to turn out to be right, and you know, it doesn't mean anything. The truth of the matter is that the signals come in apparently strongly enough that even when the remote viewer himself is certain it can't possibly be, it can turn out he's right. Here's one example. I was sent to Costa Rica. Each day in San Jose, Costa Rica at 1.30, I had to pick out some site. And I had remote viewers back in uh, California, remote viewing. One day I had a chance to, to play a trick. I jumped on a plane. I flew to an island. And I was standing there at the airport on this island. The poor remote viewer, meanwhile, is getting an airport with a long runway and ocean at the end of the runway. And he says to himself, I can't be right. He's in San Jose, Costa Rica. It's miles from the ocean. There's no reason for him to be in an airport. So he tried to erase it and see if he couldn't get the real site. And as it turned out, that's the only thing that came in. So he kept putting it down. And in fact, that is where I was. And so that shows that even in remote